On August 19, 2012, a man walked into a convenience store in Door County, Wisconsin, and asked the clerk to use the phone to call 911. He proceeded to tell the operator he wanted to report a murder. The operator asked the man who had been murdered, and he told her that it was 21-year-old Alicia Bromfield. When asked if he knew who killed her, he simply said, I did. But who was this man? What did he want from Alicia Bromfield? And why did he kill Alicia? Alicia Bromfield was born in Will County, Illinois on August 28, 1990. Her family and friends described her as helpful, bubbly, and a generally happy person. She went to high school at Joliet Catholic School before enrolling at Western Illinois University to study forensic science and criminal justice. In early 2012, Alicia Bromfield found out she was pregnant. Though the father chose not to be involved, she was excited to become a mother. After finding out she was having a daughter, she named her Ava Lucille. Alicia had been working for Grand Flower Growers since she was 16, setting up the displays at the local Home Depot. Her job allowed her to be paid during the off-season, which was essential for a student, especially one with a baby coming. Alicia Bromfield always wanted to be good at her job, and so she worked very hard, and all that hard work did not go unnoticed by her boss, 36-year-old Brian Cooper. Brian was Alicia's supervisor. She had worked for him for five years. Cooper was the regional manager at Home Depot Garden Centers in Northern Illinois. Although Alicia and Brian were not romantically involved, they sometimes met after work, and Alicia walked his dog from time to time. Since Alicia was just 21 and would soon become a single mother, her job was particularly important to her. However, her boss, Brian, was a violent bully at work and outside of it. Brian had a history of calling Alicia names like whore and slut in front of clients and co-workers. He would occasionally even throw things at her. Another employee later stated that Cooper abused her as well. He would make comments about his genitals and rub himself against her. The bottom line, Brian was a creep and his employees despised him. Cooper would tell Alicia she needed to do something and threaten to dismiss or reduce her hours if she didn't. He would frequently schedule Alicia to work when she had doctor's appointments to spend more time with her. However, the admiration was not returned. According to Alicia's best friend, Cooper told his co-workers that she was his girlfriend, but she had repeatedly turned him down, which irritated him beyond words. Cooper's abuse was reported to top management by Alicia, but the administration did nothing. She felt trapped in a job she enjoyed with a boss who bullied her. In August 2012, Brian forced Alicia to accompany him to his sister's wedding in Door County, Wisconsin. Her best friend and mother believed that he threatened her job if she did not attend. Alicia's mother, Sherry, knew how Brian treated her daughter and begged her not to attend. But Alicia told her mother that she had no option. She had to go or she would lose her job. Alicia informed Sherry that she had told Brian that they were traveling as friends and that they would return the next morning. On August 17, 2012, Brian and Alicia left to attend the wedding in Door County, approximately a four-hour drive from Plainfield, Illinois, where Alicia lived. Alicia told her mother that they were staying at the same resort as the wedding party. Sherry received a phone call from Alicia the morning of the wedding. Alicia was furious and told her mother that she and Brian had an argument and were returning to Illinois. Brian was expected to walk his sister down the aisle that day, which worried Alicia's mother. She pushed Alicia to tell Brian's sister that they were leaving. That's when she discovered her daughter and Brian were staying at the same hotel as the wedding party. Apparently, Alicia had no idea where the wedding party was staying. A couple hours later, Alicia sent another text to Sherry, telling her that she decided to stay after all. The following day after the beautiful lakeside wedding, a gas station surveillance video captured Brian Cooper coming into the convenience store in soaking wet clothes and asking the clerk to call 911 for him. There, he confessed to murdering Alicia Bromfield. A few moments later, Door County Sheriff's deputies arrived at the gas station. 36-year-old Brian Cooper was arrested and charged with the murder of Alicia Bromfield. When the police arrived at the hotel room, they found Alicia lying nude with a blanket partially covering her body and a pillow neatly placed under her head. A closer examination of the body showed scratches, bruises, and injuries. Both Alicia and her unborn daughter, Ava, were killed. While being interrogated, Brian confessed. In his confession, he stated that the two got into an argument after the wedding. Alicia informed Brian that there wouldn't be a friendship once they returned to Illinois, and Brian did not want that to happen. After Alicia fell asleep, Brian said that he debated harming Alicia. 
he finally decided to strangle her. He took a cord and a phone charger and jumped on her. He started strangling her as she begged for him to spare her for the sake of her unborn child. Then, in absolute depravity, Brian sexually assaulted Alicia's dead body. I just wanted to see her naked. Brian Cooper also confessed injuring but not killing an ex-girlfriend during his confession. His ex-girlfriend had not pressed charges at the time. Brian Cooper was enamored with Alicia Bromfield, according to police. He had installed cameras in his bathroom, capturing Alicia when she used the toilet after walking his dog. He even installed a camera in their hotel room to record her exiting the shower. After murdering Alicia, Brian tried to kill himself, first with a dull knife and then with a corkscrew. When it didn't work, he went to sleep in the bathtub. When Brian woke up the following day, he drove to a nearby park and tried to drown himself. He failed again and went to a gas station to call the cops and turn himself in. Brian Cooper was charged with two counts of first-degree murder and one count of sexual assault post-mortem. Brian Cooper pleaded not guilty due to mental illness or defect despite his confession. His defense claimed that he could not grasp what he was doing due to voluntary intoxication. He was too drunk to distinguish between right and wrong. The prosecution poked holes in this theory by referencing Cooper's confession and his continuous abuse towards Alicia. Brian Cooper could recollect what he did to Alicia in great detail, which was unusual for someone who was intoxicated. It was also pointed out that Cooper tried to commit suicide after killing Alicia, which showed that he was aware of what he was doing. After five days of testimony, listening to the 911 call and Cooper's graphic confession, the case went to the jury. Unbelievably, it ended in a 10-2 hung jury. He was found guilty of the third-degree sexual assault, but now everyone feared that he would not be held accountable on the two first-degree murder charges. Alicia's family had to endure a second trial. Meanwhile, Alicia's mother and best friend decided that no one should ever be permitted to use voluntary intoxication as a reason for murder again. Her mother was the driving force behind a movement to modify the laws. She was successful in having the law passed in 32 states, including Wisconsin, to prohibit the voluntary intoxication defense. The law, however, would not apply to Brian Cooper because the murder occurred before the law was approved. The jury in the second trial heard about Brian Cooper's twisted obsession with Alicia and how he misused his authority as her boss. They watched the pictures taken by covert cameras. They listened to Cooper's confession, in which he detailed his decision to murder Alicia despite her pleas for the life of her unborn child. The jury found him guilty on all counts. Brian Cooper received two consecutive life sentences in July. Brian has attempted to appeal the verdict several times, but his appeal has been rejected. Sherry Anisich promised she would never hear of another parent going through what she had to go through after sitting through two exhausting trials. Sherry battled with intense feelings of rage and guilt, wondering whether there was anything she could have done to spare her daughter and unborn granddaughter's lives. Alicia's family launched the Purple Project in honor of Alicia and Ava, in addition to advocating for legislative changes. The organization provides assistance to single mothers and grief therapy to parents who have lost children.